Hey everyone, today I'm going to be breaking open vials of radioactive tritium and seeing if the radioactivity around me actually increases by measuring it with a Geiger counter. So I have here some mini replicas of Chernobyl and on here are tiny little vials of tritium. Now tritium is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen. So normal hydrogen has just one proton, it doesn't even have another neutron. But this specific isotope has one proton and two neutrons with it. So that makes it unstable and radioactive. It has a half-life of around 12 years. So it decays through something called beta decay. Let me explain what that is. So here's my tritium atom. It has one proton here, two neutrons, and then one electron orbiting around it. So you can see that electrically it's stable. It has one proton, one electron, positive and negative charge, they cancel each other out, and so overall it doesn't have an electric charge. The two neutrons don't have an electric charge. But because of these two extra neutrons, it makes the atom unstable. And so basically what happens is this atom decays. Now when this tritium atom decays, something weird happens. It's not like it just breaks apart, but what happens is one of these neutrons in here actually becomes a proton. And then somehow two other particles are created another electron, and then something called an antineutrino. So we started off with a hydrogen atom, and we ended up with a helium atom, because it has two protons, two electrons. Now one of these electrons in the helium atom actually goes shooting off into space, and same with this antineutrino. Now because this electron goes shooting off, that's why this is radioactive. This is actually called beta radiation. Beta radiation just means an electron shooting at you. And this antineutrino you don't have to worry about because it most likely can't hit you. In fact, it'll probably just pass through the earth without hitting the nucleus of any other atom. So this seems weird. In this reaction, it seems like we magically produce two particles when we switch this neutron into a proton. So what really happened here? How did this neutron suddenly become a proton and emit an electron and an antineutrino? Well, because I didn't show one step here. All the neutrons and protons actually aren't fundamental particles. They're actually made up of smaller particles called quarks. A neutron, for example, is made of one up quark and two down quarks. So up, down, down. And the up and down has nothing to do with orientation. It's just what they're called. They're called an up quark and a down quark. But sometimes what can happen to one of these down quarks is it can just spontaneously emit something called a W boson. And this can be comparable to something like a photon. A photon mediates the electromagnetic force. The W boson mediates the weak nuclear force. So this is a nuclear reaction happening, not a chemical reaction. And what happens is when it emits this boson, this boson can split into an electron and an antineutrino. And when this down quark emits this W boson, what happens is it switches to an up quark. So now it's an up, down, up. And now because it's an up, down, up quark, it's no longer a neutron, it's a proton, because protons are made of up, down, up quarks. So I have here some mini Chernobyl reactors with small little vials of tritium here. Now on the outside of these vials of tritium, it has some phosphorescent material. So when those electrons of the tritium come off and hit it, it produces visible light. So that means if I turn out the lights, we should see these vials actually glowing. Okay, so you're gonna be looking at these two vials right here, right here and right here. Three, two, one. <laughs> Look at that. So you can see them right there. Look at them just glowing. So these are glowing due to millions and billions of these tritium atoms shooting off electrons that are hitting the phosphorescent material on the outside of these vials and that's emitting visible light. So this isn't glow in the dark material. These will last in the dark indefinitely until this tritium material runs out. All right, so how I'm going to be measuring this is I'm going to have my Geiger counter here. And this Geiger counter can measure beta radiation. So this green number here, this is the current density of the beta particles. So right now, every time the green light's going off right here, it's detecting a beta particle. Oh, there's one right there. 
So you can see that this is in a normal range. This is just background radiation of the room. So we're still within a normal range here. Okay, so now, but now I'm going to remove one of these tritium vials and let's break it open and see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to crush it. Three, two, one. Okay, I broke it. My detector right by it. So you can see the broken vial right here. And I don't see an increase in radioactivity, still within normal levels. Okay, now that we've let this radioactive tritium escape from the vial, let's see if this vial actually glows in the dark still. I'll set it right here. Okay, so it no longer glows. You can see it sitting right there. I'm gonna turn out the lights. I don't see any glow from it now. Okay, so I have another vial of tritium here. So you can see how this isn't glow in the dark. It's actually tritium causing this light here. So when I'm going to crush it, the glow in the dark should go away. Okay, here, three, two, one. <laughs> That's awesome. So as soon as I crushed it, that uh, radioactive hydrogen escaped into the air and so it could no longer light up that phosphorescent material with the beta particles hitting it. And so the light just went away. So in the end, what happens is we end up with this helium atom that's not dangerous because it's pretty stable. And then this one electron that shoots off and this electron can be the dangerous part. So how dangerous beta radiation has to do with how much energy this electron shooting off has. And it happens to be that for tritium, this electron coming off doesn't have a lot of energy. In fact, it can only pass through around six millimeters of air before it stops. Also, it can't even get through the outer layers of your skin. It doesn't have enough energy to penetrate your body. The only real danger comes from if you were to inhale this tritium and it was inside of your body and it was able to penetrate your soft tissue there. Then the problem is that this thing is now in your body and these electrons can hit whatever they hit in there, cause radiation poisoning or even cancer if it hits some of your DNA. So you can see that this small amount of tritium isn't actually that dangerous. That's because in order to actually perceive the beta radiation, the tritium atoms have to be inside of you. And so unless you're ingesting it or inhaling a large amount of it, you're actually not going to be exposed to that radiation. And for that reason, tritium vials are actually used all around us. In a lot of exit signs, they have tritium vials, and that's so that they can be illuminated even in the event of a power outage. And sometimes on gun sites, they have tritium vials. And even in fishing lures, they sometimes have them. So in reality, these small tritium vials don't really pose a health concern. So thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.